guys, it's Aaron. Today I want to take a look at something that was recommended or suggested by our buddy Matt Robinson. Some of you guys might remember Matt, he was a videographer at SketchUp for a while. He uh, co-hosted our live streams for quite a while. And I was talking to Matt and he asked if I ever done a skill builder around using the volume information side of SketchUp to calculate weights. And I hadn't specifically done that and I played with it and actually came up with a couple cool skills out of it. So we're going to hop in and look at that right now. Okay, so I'm going to start from scratch here. I'm going to say that I want to create a, a weight for like a, a dumbbell or something like that. I want to make my own because I'm so cheap. Um, I want to make a circular weight plate out of concrete. So I have some numbers I want to deal with. So first thing is how big is it going to be? I want it to be six inches. So I'm going to start with a circle. I'm going to pull that out to three my radius give me a six inch circle now in the middle of that I want to have an inch and a half to run my bar through so I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna type 0.75 for my radius and then I can come in here and just delete that all right now this I'm gonna go ahead and push pull this up like uh, one inch I don't know exactly where it's gonna be but I'm gonna make it one inch tall now I'm gonna just triple click and make this into a groove. I could make it a component. Everything's the same that we're looking at here. Uh, I'm gonna make some copies and change them. That's why I'm not messing with component because I'm not gonna actually have this repeat at all, but everything we're doing from here on in would work for a component as well as a group. So the thing I wanna look at is right here. So currently, this is 26.21 cubic inches. Now, thanks to the Google, I know that concrete, one pound of concrete fills 11.5 cubic inches. So if I want this to be a one pound weight, which for this example I do, I gotta get it down to 11.5 inches. So that's less than half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna push pull, and I'm gonna bring it down a half an inch. So right now, if I click out of here and click on it again, it tells me it's 13.1. So what I can do now is I can just do a little bit of uh, quick playing. I'm going to pull it down an eighth of an inch and see how that what that does for me. Uh, too far. So let's go ahead and push pull, pull it up a sixteenth of an inch. And what do I got now? Oh, 11.46. So if I pull it up another sixteenth of an inch, which is what my grid snapping is currently set to, it's going to go over my 1.5. So I could do some math in here. Well, one could do some math in here, but I could also come in here and push pull it up. See right now it's snapping to the 16th of an inch. Even if my length snapping is set to a 16th of an inch, I can still come in and say, I want to pull it up 1 64th of an inch. Even though I don't have, it won't snap to that, I can still force it to do that. And when I do that, it comes to 11 point. So I was actually closer before. I'm just going to undo that. So. I'm going to say for concrete, 11.46 is close enough to 1.5. I like that. That's good enough. That's going to be my one point, my one pound weight. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that over here. Uh, I'm going to do two of them. And then uh, let's see. I'm going to take those and I'm going to make a couple copies of those because we're going to, that was, that was a good explanation but uh, we're, we're gonna get we're gonna do more than that all right so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one pound weight and I want to make it into a five pound weight so how would I go about doing that there's three ways I could think of so first thing I'll do is I'll come here and I will move and use copy to put one plate on top of another and type 4x that's gonna give me a total of five plates now what I can do is select all of these right click make group if I come into that group and select those groups and explode them, now it's a single mass. I'll just go to erase, erase these rings, one piece right now. Oop, I got some here in the middle I could erase too. And that is currently one solid piece. If I click on it, it's five times the volume of that last one. Okay, so that was nice. How else could I go about that? Well, the other thing I could do is I can, if I knew the height, if I know that this is where five times one of those is, I can use push pull to pull it up to here. 
that's going to give me the same volume that I got by putting it five times. So that's that's okay. Both of those are a lot of work though. Well, a lot, you know, six steps. Oh, forget about it. To make this copy, I had to copy it a bunch of times. To do this one right here, I had to know the exact height that I wanted to push pull to. But this guy right here, let's look at a different way to do this. So if I select this and I go to scale, with scale, I can start to pull up. And then what I can do is I can tell, I want that to be five times bigger. So I can just type five, hit enter, and look, volume is exactly the same. So the important point here is that when volume calculates, it calculates the volume of the solid inside the group, regardless of that group's distortion by the container itself. That was a hairy explanation, I apologize. But the point is, it doesn't matter if I go into the group and change the faces around, or I use something like scale on the outside, it's gonna get me the same volume regardless. So over here, if I want two and a half times, so doing that same method, I take this right here and I could say, move with a copy. I'll go option, copy up one, and then I'll sit, say option and copy the second one, not all the way to the top, but I'll go find the midpoint of this side here. And now I have two and a half, so I could grab all that, make it into a group, same thing I did before. Now, even though they overlap, I might get some funny stuff happen here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna explode. All right, that worked okay. And then I can come in here, say erase, erase those lines there, erase my lines here. And now I have a two and a half, one pound, two and a half pound, some would call it. That was pretty easy. And again here, right now what I could do actually is I can say push, pull, grab this surface. And if I didn't have this, I could actually come to this one right here and grab a halfway up because two and a half is half the size of five. So I can actually use the midpoint of that five pound weight to get that to the right size. Or again, using scale, I could come over here, grab the container, not enter it. Scale, start scaled up. 2.5 and what I should get from that from all of those is the same volume 28.66 28.66 so I don't know if you're planning on buying some concrete and creating your own weights or not if you are well there you go that's how you could calculate your weight sizes piece of cake um, but regardless that volume command in there, that volume data is kind of a nice thing to keep an eye on if you ever have to calculate how big something is or how much it's gonna work at weight, that sort of thing. Uh, you might have to do a little bit of math depending on, it's not gonna calculate the mass automatically based on the material, but uh, it's pretty easy to figure out that number. If I can figure it out, you guys can do it. I know you can. More importantly though, we saw some cool ways to distort geometry or replicate geometry or make it multiply itself out and some different options on how you could do that. If you did like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We do several videos a week around here and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. We create most if not all of our content based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.